Hey guys, this is going to be a different kind of GES video. Today I'm doing a double review like the title and thumbnail say. So, let's get into this. But first, my name is Tyler, and I love film. Okay, I've been holding back on this review for a while, because I didn't know exactly what to say about WandaVision, even as I was watching it, even as I was planning this review. It's been freaking... Like four months, and I don't know what to say about WandaVision. First, I'm going to say the what I do know what to say about the show. First of all, I love this show. It's different. Marvel is taking big risks because people were unhappy with the first few episodes, with the first four episodes. They didn't know what was going on, and Marvel had faith in their property. It was frick ballsy to make this the first entry of phase four and i think it was the perfect choice for the first entry in phase four because of, out of all the shows and black widow i'm glad that they chose to set this one up first and it's used to something new and risky which i love that the show does second the show's themes are amazing i love the themes of this show i love the characters and their development and I love Wanda's struggles. It is so relatable. This is this Wanda is an action is an actual empowering female character, which is insane. I love that she is a superhero. We would all do what she does in the show. She wants one thing, just one thing, that she lost because she was sacrificing everything else to save us. She wants one thing, and she can't have that one thing. Even when she tries, no matter how hard she tries, she still has nightmares. No matter how hard she tries, she has to accept that she can't bring Vision back. And she can't live in her fake reality. Which is really freaking uh, awesome in this show because she actually has a fake reality. And it's a metaphorical thing too. This show is genuinely very smart, clever, and creative. And that is something in the MCU that we haven't truly seen in a while. That hasn't been pulled from the groundwork of phase one. This show is truly something new and original. Something that I've wanted to see from Marvel for a long time. The show knows what it wants to be. And it tries as hard as it can to be the best that it can be. At its heart, this show is a psychological thriller. And at some points, a horror show. Well, the points when the show was really what it wanted to be in its inception. It's a story about loss, selfishness, and the power to rise above that. Something the show also does really well is add more emotional depth, depth to Wanda and Vision and make you connect with them, make you like them, make you understand them in ways you never have. And you really feel the disturbing love between Wanda and Vision and the distance that will always be between them in her reality. But you can tell that she loves him and her fake children. I also like how in this show they introduce fan favorite characters or well, one fan favorite character of Monica Rambeau as an adult. Even though she is a overlooked and less known character she still plays a very vital role in the co in marvel comics especially in the 80s and 90s and then jimmy Woo is an interesting thing because his comics came out in the 1950s and he was basically a super spy so i liked how they included that one of the few problems that i had with the show was the outside world at first, like the fourth episode i thought it was great because it was explaining stuff but i thought it was cool how it tied in everything but that after that episode the show changed drastically the first few episodes the first three were intriguing disturbing psychological you didn't know what was going on and that scared off a lot of people that was a risk and then this episode was the exact opposite of that and just explaining everything that freaking happened i mean it kind of ruined the effect I mean, I thought it was cool that there was a dueling outside world, but it was completely unnecessary and underdeveloped. Also with the show, I liked the sitcom settings way more than I thought I would, and the deeper meanings and themes 
hidden in the sitcoms and their commercials. It was really fun and quirky in the right way. Also, Vision's characterization in the show was very appropriate and very enjoyable and really fit the character of Vision. And it was cool how he was able to uh, in the end eventually survive into the real world. There's also some major comic and lore drops in the show, which I loved. Now I'm going to get to Agatha. So first of all, the song was fantastic. Second of all, I didn't really like how like all of her witch, like her witch plot line at the beginning of one of the episodes, but she was a um, pretty um, appropriate villain for Wanda and did help carry the story forward. But it, she wasn't great. Like, she was fun, but she wasn't great. To build upon something I said before, this show is way different after episode four. And then episode five, six, and seven are more of a character study of Wanda, completely abandoning the hidden themes that intrigue to be more in your face about everything it's trying to say. And is more of a character study. But that works in the favor of the show at most turns. And I also like how the show deals slightly with the aftermath of Infinity War, which leads into my okay. next point. The finale of WandaVision. I didn't hate episode eight. I actually enjoyed Wanda's new, um, how she was always, how she always had her powers and her origin, and how Tony Stark and Age of Ultron um, con and Hydra connected to it. But I did... And I I didn't completely like how she was freaking like an actual witch, but the Scarlet Witch like power, like the it's kind of like the Phoenix Force itself, was pretty cool, and definitely made some House of M references. And her suit is completely dope. Also, one thing I'd like to point out: I'm, I was originally making a WandaVision video about all my theories about it during the show, and I basically predicted like three quarters to half of the show and the further MCU going into Loki. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the finale. While we're on the topic of theories, I'm going to talk about the X-Men. The finale in the show didn't need the X-Men, and it's better off without it. I know it's part of the MCU's charm, introducing new things, but I'm glad the show didn't do it and end up like Loki, which you'll hear my opinion on in a second. I didn't hate the finale. It tied up enough knots. Um, I thought Wanda's arc was fine in the episode, and I hated how they abandoned Tyler Hayward. Overall, this show is truly one of the greatest things the MCU has produced. I give this a 9.3 out of 10. Okay, now I'm going to talk about Loki. This one's going to be a little different from how I did WandaVision. Because I'm going to go episode by episode with this one. I literally like, just watched the finale last night. And I got to say, it was disappointing. But like I said, I got to go episode by episode. So I start from the beginning. I definitely don't hate the show as much as I... Hated, kind of loved Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but this is definitely the worst MCU show of this year, or of the MCU shows based off of the movie characters. Okay, episode one. Really, the only part about this episode that I liked was Loki and Owen Wilson sitting in a room and talking, which wasn't always great in the show when they were just talking because some conversations lost their spark and became completely pointless and contradicted each other. This conversation these conversations is a complete character study of loki and i loved it i loved his new arc that was set up and the tva was intriguing enough to keep you hooked and you were definitely hooked by the end of the episode but the really only great part was with loki and him admitting every everything he hides from himself to himself episode two of loki is definitely my least favorite after some reconsiderations of other episodes i have confirmed that this is definitely the episode i would consider the worst so first of all it's not engaging there is not a lot of visible character growth from loki he is just being wide-eyed and acting like a puppy dog um and yeah it wasn't engaging we were supposed to find out who the other loki was when we found out we weren't. In, I wasn't engaged. I wasn't excited. It wasn't earned, and there were no stakes. This episode was disappointing, but not completely terrible. Even though it's the worst of the series. Oh yeah, I also totally thought and hoped Sylvie would be enchantress. Now I'm on episode three. So first, I'm gonna say the direction in this I don't think was great at all. 
now there was the production design until the very end where Loki and Sylvia are sitting on a rock talking. And that was like the only good part of the episode anyway, where there was actual development. But then the rest of it, they're just getting to know each other. And the production design wasn't great at all. Like, especially in the beginning, it's like, what the hell is happening? It's not entertaining. It's not like fun. I didn't like watching it. And my, my main problems with this episode stem from the lack thereof of character development. It was mostly wasted time. And, and then there was also a part in this episode where they use unspecified identity politics to become woke in this episode. This episode wasn't the worst because it had a few good moments, but otherwise wasn't special. Okay, now we're on to episode four. Everything I like from the first episode is pretty much back. The dynamic duo of Owen Wilson and Loki, and they're back in the room with Loki, studying Loki. And um, this is really where um, Loki banging himself is brought up. Let's just, let me I just say this. I don't have a problem with it. I mean, there was a hot female version of myself. I'd f that. And I don't really want to sound like I don't like it when characters are sitting down talking. I love that. This show, I think, doesn't always land it, though. It doesn't always make me care. And it doesn't always slow down with the characters enough. Or it just keeps doing the same thing with the characters, show, keeps showing the same thing, the same development, and not actually freaking taking it into a new place or going deeper with it. Like, the deeper themes, like with the TVA, like on how, on control and free will, that I explored in the last few episodes. I mean, I think that's good, but they didn't go deep enough. And it is freaking watered down in all this other crap. And Loki is kind of a side character in his own story. And I think that's annoying. I know he might, I know he's sh trying not to use his powers and be mischievous as part of his arc, but it's not great. And back to episode four. I really liked all the stuff with Lady Sif and how her words took on a deeper meaning. I think that was great, and that really changed Loki for the last big time in the show. But otherwise, I think everything, the ending with the timekeepers was really dumb. So all the intrigue, they just they just stopped everything that we wanted to see, and they just stopped it like that. I mean, that was annoying. But yeah, it would have been really boring if they had to actually kill the, a bunch of freaking old space wizards. But otherwise, this episode isn't great, but it's better than the others. Okay. Now we're on to episode five. My favorite of the series by far. I mean, I really loved all the lore drops. Like, all the different versions of Loki I loved. Kid Loki. I mean, the kid comics of the Marvel heroes was funny. Um, the frog Thor, the Thorg reference, that was funny. Um, the classic Loki, I loved that. He was wearing the classic Loki costume from the comics. I mean, he was like exactly like how would I imagine like in live action how the original Loki would look. But I don't just like it for the freaking um, fan service. I mean, you really see Loki start caring, like really caring, like unapologetically caring about Sylvie and Mobius. Because before he was kind of like, um, no, I don't really care. But now like his growth is actually sustained. You can actually see the growth in this episode. It isn't just in a few scenes. You can see that he's changed in this episode. I'm gonna do this quick, episode six of Loki. So for me, this is a pretty mad episode. Um, I liked how they were just sitting down and talking about the entire fate of the MCU, and things did start to make sense, but it was unimportant. And the only purpose of it was to set up more of the MCU. There was no further character growth for Loki, and like none for Sylvie, just making her everything she was afraid of being, and she literally completed her mission. Otherwise, this episode just was only there to set up season two and the rest of the MCU. Hopefully the following will be better than this episode. Overall, this show isn't the greatest. Kind of represents all my problems with the MCU at this point, or at least MCU series going further. I gotta say, I didn't love this show, like you know. It could have been so much more, but... It's not the worst thing that they've created. It's just nothing unique, no matter how hard it tries to be, and that's the saddest part. I give this show, sadly, a 7.6, which isn't even failing, but it's relatively low.